Hey all, this is Anton. This is Tanner. And this is Richie. And welcome back for our New Year's celebration 2021, y'all. Oh boy, things can hopefully only go up from here. And speaking of going up, how about a nice big dose of digitized serotonin in the form of Astro's Playroom? This is a packing title for the PS5, so if you've got a PS5 and you haven't played it, more for you really, because this is one hell of a charming celebration of Sony's many, many, many pieces of merchandise. Well, that's a cynical take on the whole thing, but it's more a Sony history lesson, while also being a demonstration of how the new DualSense controller works. In fact, we're going to get a, a, a bit of a crash course in this the very second we start things here. So, let's go with Astro's Playroom. I know a lot of people skipped over on The Playroom, which was on PS4, and was also pre-installed, uh, but because if you don't didn't have the actual uh, PS4 camera, it would only play a video, which that's not a game, and who has the PlayStation 4 camera? Uh, so some people might have skipped it over, oh. uh, you know, oh, look at this history, uh, because of that, but with this, you don't need no accessories other than the controller that it came with for what is an excellent platformer and wonderful museum for Sony. <laughs> We're not being paid to show this, I swear. It's just a very good game. Especially for a free game. They could have, like, easily half-assed this, but there's so much love in this. And let's start with the controller. Oh yeah, I mean, this, this is just ridiculous. You guys won't be able to obviously tell because they haven't invented haptic feedback for YouTube videos yet, but these triggers are actively resisting me here, so it is like a jet engine actually going off. Yeah, much like VR, it is one of those things where you need to actually try it yourself to really understand why it's a big deal, because on YouTube you're like, what, well, just looks like you're just doing whatever, but no, 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 that is... HD Rumble, because it's actually by the same company that does the Nintendo Switch's HD Rumble, feels incredible. And here's a perfect example of it, where you can shake them up and feel them in your controller. Like ice cubes, but they're alive. Indeed. And uh, not to gloss over the touchpad, um, but I'll go back to it. It has multi-touch input now, as opposed to single-touch input on the PlayStation 4 controller. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing! <laughs> it's a microphone. <laughs> what, what do you need me to tell you about that? Honestly, I've, I've enjoyed the microphone a lot just for the fact that you can use it to replace typing when you make your shit posts when you're playing your games. <laughs> this PlayStation 5 is to scale, by the way. We're actually recording this out in space right now. It's crazy. I know, I mean, the thing is just absolutely frickin' gigantic. <laughs> Here's the escape pod to get off the SS PlayStation 5. There was an Astrobot inside the controller the whole time! And he's so frickin' cute! And not just a Astrobot, it is Captain Astro, the same player character for Astrobot Rescue Mission VR, uh, as well as appearing in the Playroom VR. This is the fourth Astrobot title on the PlayStation, actually. And a lot of people don't know that, because most of those needed weird accessories. And what's actually really quite awesome is that, so, both Astro Robot Rescue Mission and Astro's Playroom were drawn by the same team, so the Asobi team at SIE Japan Studio, um, but also both of them were directed by, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of his name, but Nicolas Doucet, um, who is a French designer who is currently, I believe, one of the studio heads at Sony Japan Studio. Um, started his Sony career in London, working on the original PS2 iToy, and before directing the iPet in 2007, and then he moved to Tokyo to direct the PS4 launch for the Playroom, and then has followed it up with Playroom VR and um, Astrobot Rescue Mission, and then Astro's Playroom. And honestly, this thing is freaking adorable. And were it not for another game having come out this year, this actually probably would have ended up being my game of the year. Same, honestly. Now, you might be wondering what these monoliths around this place are. They actually represent parts of the PlayStation 5 in general. Like, here we have Memory, which is also PS1 Dimension, the SSD, which is the PS2 Dimension, the Cooling Fan, which is the PS3 Dimension, and the GPU over there, which is PS4 Dimension. 
Before we get going, why don't I just show you how Astrobot plays and whatnot? Because there's a little bit of uh, stuff to do in the hub here. Oh, yeah. In addition to running and jumping, you can punch, crush Bandicoot spin, and probably the most important tool you have, which is the grab here. So you can grab stuff in the walls, on the floors, uh, you can kind of m Mario to it and pull out stuff to throw. Um, you also have this nifty hover that feels real good. It has a, a good arc to it. Helps save those jumps while also letting you get some extended ones. Uh, and those lasers aren't for show, they can hurt enemies as well. And you are going to need to use that if you are going to succeed, because some enemies you can happily punch away at, um, but some of them are a little bit spiky, and you know if you punch a spike, it's going to hurt. So you need to use the lasers to uh, destroy those particular enemies. I, I can't believe I have to bring this up, but does the Astrobot logo remind anyone else of the Discord logo? Absolutely. Yeah. It's just missing <laughs> the ears. Sorry, it was bugging me, like, the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at this. There's a cable, and it's just, like, a PS1 controller cable. And, of course, you know, representing all facets of, you know, PlayStation, you have to put in the amazing rail grinding from Infamous in here, because uh, that's the coolest part of that game. Well, I would uh, think Insomniac's a bit of a golden child at a... Uh... Sony now, given the huge success of both uh, the first Spider-Man and Miles Morales. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, they already were, thanks to things like Ratchet and Clank and so on and so forth, but they just continue to be absolutely stellar developers, at least from what we know right now, because, like, obviously, positivity and joy yay um but there are more and more game developers recently where you kind of go oh we, we love you and then they turn out to be you know massive crunches and it all gets a little bit dark and horrible yeah that is a shame but insomniac has kind of always been on my list of top developers really them um nintendo level five actually with the likes of Layton and dark cloud and so on so that whole platforming section there, I didn't even know about because I played this game once all the way through, didn't 100% it, and uh, didn't really know about it. But I think we have two people here who have played it a lot more than me, so they know all sorts of secrets. Indeed. So, let's start things off in chronological order with Memory Meadow. Shasha! Ironically, also the first level I picked by happenstance. Didn't even know this was the PS1 inspired one. Yeah, I ended up going to the cooling fans first. I don't know, something about the fan excited me. Oh, that's fine, mate. I actually did uh, GPU Jungle first, which is the PS4 one, when I did the uh, PlayStation 5 unboxing. We have all sorts of little stuff to pick up, which give us coins, which will be used uh, after you beat the levels. Um, the other collectibles we've already been collecting are some jigsaw pieces, which, again, we'll get to learn more about once we beat the level. Uh, but there is one other very important collectible, which we won't see for a little bit here, uh, but that is the PlayStation memorabilia. So, oh, we'll have a lot to say about that. Well, <laughs> Richie and I probably will. You, Tatter, are a filthy Nintendo fanboy, so... I know. I bet you can't even name this reference, Tanner. Uh, Pikmin? Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, of course not. It is, Richie? It's Flower. Booyah. The uh, hilariously popular, I think, or at least successful indie title, Flower. I think the reason it was really popular was because it was one of the first games that had a demo that was like, hey, you can check out the DualSense 3's motion controls. And you're like, wow, I can control my PlayStation with motion controls. This is amazing. And then no game used the, the motion controls. <laughs> I will say there is every risk that exactly the same is going to happen with the DualSense because... Yeah, I'm so worried. Obviously, Astro's Playroom is an incredible showcase for everything that this controller can do. Um, but then you move over to things like Spider-Man Miles Morales, also a launch title, and it does absolutely sweet bugger all with it. And while that is partially the case because, you know, it also came out on PlayStation 4 and yada yada yada, um, it's a little bit like, this happens every single time there's a new console. Um, please don't let it happen again. Ah, uh, there's a very familiar face, Tanner. 
Yes, uh, from my marathon playthrough, it's Sir Daniel Fortescue, or Botescue, I guess, because he's a robot now. Medieval, essentially. And then all the way over here that we just sort of ran past, little bit of um, bot escape, or as you know, it's better known, ape escape. Hell yeah. Half the fun in this game is just like finding the cameos and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Pointing at it, clapping, going, I recognize that. Well, you know, fan service has been turned into a dirty term by people who hate fun and uh, wish all of us to be as miserable as they are, so forget it, forget them. I will clap like the fucking seal slash sheep that I am. <laughs> I think with that, it's the whole thing of... It's the way in which people use the term fan service because I think its original intention, what it originally was intended to mean, was just, it's, it's things to make the fans happy. Perfectly fine, perfectly innocent. Um, but it's since followed to mean things like, you know, putting the boobingtons in various things and over-pandering to people. It's, it's not most of what it is, but there we go. Oh, look, it's Death Stranding. That's a thing. That's weird. I didn't realise they were putting non-game references in this. Oh, boom, destruction! <laughs> Kojima's just sitting down to watch his latest episode of a HFC playthrough, <laughs> unaware that a burn of the century is around the corner. Well, actually, s speaking of, there is something to be said also. This is a uh, Tearaway, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. game I don't know much about. Um, it's interesting that there is, you know, Death Stranding here, but there's other Kojima, you know, uh, I'm not going to say inspired, but there's Kojima titles in here that he has since left that makes me go, I wonder how he feels being in the same game with that, you know, company that uh, fired him. Oh. Oh, I love this one, even though I've never played the game, but I want to. It's Eco Ico. I never know how to pronounce it, but I just say Eco. Look at that. Beautiful. There's the save couch, which you can take a nice little respite on. Sadly, does not save the game. Aw. Oh. Well, you may die in one hit, but uh, it loads so fast, you'll be back before you even realize you are, so it's not like it matters. Uh-huh. And also, there isn't actually any live counter, so it, death doesn't matter. You're a Rishi 2021. Death does not matter. <laughs> Man, this is so well detailed, I kind of want to reach into my PC module and grab it. Yeah, it's it's incredible because you can even, like, read the details on the back of the, you know, as we get, like, controllers and stuff, um, which is crazy because I can't even read those on my controllers because they're so blurred nowadays. Jesus. I'm pressing the buttons on the door sense and it's reflecting on this. So, I don't think I've ever actually touched a non, like, Dual Shock or. It was Dual Shock, the, the Ape Escape one, right? The, for the PS1. I don't think I've ever touched an original PS1 controller until I got the Mini, uh, which I only got it because it was on sale. And it's just so. It always looks like a knockoff controller to me, seeing it without the sticks. To be honest, I don't think I've ever actually touched um, an original PlayStation controller either. Um, which it, It's one of those things of, of... We exist in such a strange time in gaming history where there was so much new stuff, but so much stuff that hadn't existed yet, that it's just fascinating to think back at what was and what came after. Mm -hmm. So what we got here, Tana? So this is Everybody's Golf VR, uh, which was actually the Everybody's Golf series was originally localized as Hot Shots Golf, where they tried to make it super edgy and hardcore before, you know, they actually realized it's actually a cutesy Japanese game. Um, and then they said, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. You've now seen Astro die. Commit it to memory. It's actually interesting. There's a couple different uh, references in his deaths there. Um, that pop is very reminiscent of Little Big Planet. Um, there's another one where he like inflates like a balloon, which is very similar to Rayman. Huh. Now that you mention it, I, throughout my time playing Astro's Playroom, did not see hide nor hair of a Rayman reference. 
yeah, there's no Ubisoft references as far as I'm aware. Um, maybe there might be an Ezio somewhere that I missed, um, but that might be just one way to put it in, you know, as a little way. And oh my god, this is it. This is the moment that made me go the Dual Shock or Dual Sense rather is the greatest controller ever. It's you can feel the individual raindrops on the controller on your little head. I know it. It's incredible. I know that one, but do you, Richie? That is The Last Guardian. It is, and uh, I really want to redo The Last Guardian, because um, previously, when we did the Sony Farm for charity, for Child's Play, you know, the place we uh, always uh, do charity marathons for, I had actually a really bad tooth infection, so I was kind of like in pain throughout the whole thing, and my commentary was, if you can believe it, even less good than usual, so... Who knows, maybe on the PlayStation 5 I'll have to go back and uh, give it a shot again. Well, I mean, from what I can tell, it's actually a really... Well, I mean, also... So you're not going to get it again, because... I mean, well, is this, this is a redo. Um, but, yeah, if you go and stand under that particular bus stop, um, you will get a trophy called Jason! Jason! Um, because it is a delightful reference to Heavy Rain, where um, we're just getting a bot sitting just there. Almost every single um, trophy itself is just a straight-up name of a PlayStation franchise or PlayStation-related one. Um, one of the ones that got me was, um, on my podcast that I do, we uh, exchange games, and there was one that my friend told me to play, which I'd never heard of, called Helldivers. And I was like, I've never really heard of this game. And then, of course, right after I play it, I go to play this, and one of the trophy names is Helldivers. And I'm like, oh, wow. What a, you know, like, I would have never understood that reference if not for having played that one PS3 multiplayer game. <laughs> I got him, but he got me. It's not fair, Daddy. It's not fair. So this one, like, little area really reminds me of the final walk-up to Bowser in Mario 64. It's just with the pillars and everything. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh man, oh, we're, we're taking some inspiration from the big M. And honestly, I do feel like there's a few areas where they really clearly did actually take some inspiration from, uh, you know, their grandpappy in platforming. I mean, to be fair, that wouldn't surprise me, because that was my immediate reaction on an entering Memory Meadow, because it's Gusty Gateway, and I'm just like, Gusty Garden Galaxy, get in there. And uh, mentioning Super Mario Galaxy, I do believe that we're about to enter a level. So, yeah, as we've said, each of these sections is split into four different levels, and in... Uh, I think it's two of those different um, levels. Um, there's a gimmick level, so to speak, um, and this is very much in line with like Rolling Green Galaxy because you get in a ball, you zip yourself up, which is amazing, and it's adorable. And then you go wrong. Shop away. And you get to play what is essentially the best Super Monkey Ball game that we've got in a long time. This one eluded me when uh, I first played the game. Do you know what this is, Tano? I think it's Power Pro Coon, which is like Konami's super deformed baseball simulator. Uh, the only reason I say that is because there's a lot more uh, Konami properties that are in this game, and that's one of the most popular ones in Japan. You know they love their baseball, so that's why I'm going to assume that that's what that one is, but it could literally just be MLB. <laughs> yeah, probably. Is that, is that, is he flossing? I'll go back. There's every chance. Yeah, he's flossing. Oh my god. Nice, nice reference to Sony's Sonic the Hedgehog movie. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to turn off the fucking console. <laughs> no, be strong, Tom, be strong. You've been an asshole enough for one day, come on. So as you roll across the different environments, you will feel it in the controller. That uh, oh. HD rumble will really make you feel like you're on asphalt, or in this case, you're on flowers, watching Jumping Flash fly by. Look at him. You know, along with Mario 64, Jumping Flash and its sequel, I'm not sure if that was the third one, is arguably the, uh, the grandpappy, there's that term again, of the 3D platformer genre. Mm-hmm. 
So here you're given a bit of a choice. You can take the rough path or the dangerous one. And for the most part, whenever you're given a choice, you always want to take the dangerous one, for that's what leads you to wonderful memorabilia such as... Oh! The PS1 memory card. Uh, take a look inside, Tom. Oh, good, they're all there, because if you ever go, and here's a tip, if you go to garage sales or used game stores, always take a look inside those memory cards if you want to buy one, because if they're missing those little gold parts, even if they're only missing one, it is functionally useless. I learned that the hard way multiple times. Oh, yeah, no, that, that ain't fun. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. So I am very antsy when it comes to motion controls. <laughs> so one little uh, pro tip they give you is that if you ever press, just hold still with two with with a finger like there, you do a nice little immediate stop. Quite useful for uh, you know sections where you need to do some uh, very specific platforming. Huh. What's on the back? Oh, it's the black. Originally put there to prevent people from copying their own discs uh, until they realized, oh, if you just buy black discs, which were totally just on the market, you could just play them. <laughs> uh, CD player. I spent some time in there listening to uh, tracks from other games and so on. Mm. That was a very nostalgic mmm, Tanner. Yeah. You know, I can't say I've used the, you know the CD player of the PS1, but I will say I've used the DVD player of the PS2. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I never owned a PS1. Um, I do remember I have played on a PS1 because um, I believe that my cousin actually owned one, and the only reason that I really remember is that there's the vague memory of um, seeing Abe's Odyssey on it, um, not really knowing much else to do with anything but that was sort of my prevailing memory of that. But yeah, my gaming journey in terms of PlayStation most definitely really started with the PlayStation 2. I have weird memories with the PS1 because one day my dad just came home with a PS1 and it had um, Pac-Man World on it and another game that he said I wasn't allowed to play, so probably something like a Resident Evil. And he just came home with it one day and he hooked up to the TV and said, you have this for a week. And I'm like, what? Also, hey, it's Ace Combat. Hey, it's Combat. He hooked it up for a week, and I got to play it for a week, and then he's like, okay, we got to return it. And I'm like, what? And to this day, I have no idea why we only had a PS1 for, the, for a week, but okay. And then the only other times I played it was every time I go over to, like, a cousin's house for Christmas or Easter... Almost all of them had PS1s, which I would get to play with, so those would be the times. And nowadays, though, I own about three PS1s, because I'm a garage sale maniac. Perfectly fine, man. That is fair. Just reliving your childhood, really. Good old Ghost of Tsushima. Or Ghost of whatever, because people... Even though the game's been out for a while, they keep getting the title wrong, and it's funny! Well, it is when you're not confusing Richie with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's mostly because I've not really seen that many people play Ghost of Tsushima, so I've not had any connection with that. Oh, <laughs> flipping genius. Love it. Speaking of which, just whilst I'm on the thought, the people who did the writing on these sort of, like, artifact prompts are actual geniuses, like the pun levels are off the charts. It's pretty great. Oh, rubber ducky reference. Yay! <laughs> that was the, uh, the first collectible I found in my time playing, which made me go, oh god, how much did I miss? Which is, you know, about, you know, as we've seen from here, about four things only, so it's not too much. But I was like, oh no, because I had no idea these collectibles were in. And when I found them, I was like, that is so cool. Just collecting bits of the history of PlayStation. Uh, and we haven't seen it yet, because you'll mostly see it once you beat the world. But there is stuff you can do with them. It's not just a pop-up into the, you know, the menu sort of thing. You'll get to see them once we head on out of the first world. Mm-hmm. Get out of here. Ah! I think that's 
infamous? Yes. That is indeed infamous. You can tell from his glowy hands and grinding on the rails and being in Street Fighter versus Tekken, uh, which was the weirdest crossover ever, but all right, go ahead, Sony. Speaking of which, we still haven't seen Tekken X Street Fighter launch into the wild yet. That was a thing that was meant to happen, wasn't it? Yeah, so Harada said it's still in the works, but he said because Tekken... 7 and Street Fighter 5 are still getting content, it'd be stupid to release another fighting game into the market right now. So he said once those games are done, they'll look into it. I mean, we did get Akuma in Tekken 7, so we got a little bit of it there, but we also got Negan and Noctis there, so... Yeah. <laughs> we got... Honestly, honestly, I'll take that over all the Street Fighter casts, is just having these stupid crossovers. Also, when has the fighting game in industry ever cared about saturating the market? Well... You, yeah, you're not wrong, but there is a lot right now, what with... I mean, um, Namco Bandai has two, they have Soul Calibur and Tekken. Capcom is one, and then Arc System Works is announcing a new one every week. All right, Richie, do you know what this one is? Because I didn't at first. Oh, the boomerang of multiplayer shenanigans. I think I've forgotten what this one is. Is it meant to be Fatal Frame or something? See, I thought, like, Fatal Frame is one, but I also almost think it's that new one that just got announced, that um, Ghostwire Tokyo. It's it, it's some horror Japanese game that I mean, we don't know what it is off the bat, but eh, it could be any number of them. I think it might be Siren, actually. Oh, that might be it. Like, I've, I remember I've watched a video which highlights basically all of them, and that was a, fu a fun thing to watch and just going, ah, that's what that one is, because, well, you know, I have followed PlayStation for a relatively long time now. Not intensely, like, I'm not an... It's, my love for, Nin for PlayStation is not the same as my love for Nintendo, um, but there are a lot of um, franchises in this. I'm just like, yep, yeah, no, absolutely no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't even know what Siren is, but can I just say my favorite thwomps are CRT thwomps. Oh, bless. So it takes a little bit of inspiration from Nintendo, much like um, Sony does in general, and just makes it better. Oh, it's this guy. He was in um, some of the other spin-offs. I remember him seeing the different playroom games. Uh, I think he has a name like Gigabot or something. Uh, you see him a couple times throughout the, the adventure here. I think he is actually a boss in one of the previous games. Oh, huh. There's every chance. Booyah. Let's roll! You know, I'm just waiting for some, like, you know, skeezy Japanese game to have that be in reverse and have you uh, reverse, you know, zip down some woman's dress with the same controls. Oh, Tata. Senrin Kagura 7, come on, baby. <laughs> yeah, but the terrifying thing is, is that you're, you're probably pretty close to something that somebody is going to try to do at some point or another because, you know, we can't have nice things. Well, I mean, that's sort of a nice thing, just not something that's uh, particularly uh, gentlemanly, shall we say. <laughs> ah, fuck. Fuck, fuck. A little bit of a sonic spin ball here. I know there's something secret here, you're not going to keep it from me. I believe it might be a trophy, I want to say. Ah, uh, I'll get you. Get him! Get him! Get him! Hmm. Oh no, it's, it's just more coins. Have you gone into the side thing there? The little the little side nodule. The holy hole in the top there, yes. Yes, that is one thing that you do need to do if you want that puzzle piece. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I was overthinking that one. Yeah, pinball, you need to just turn your brain off. Uh-oh, everyone's favorite, ice physics! Ah, with touch controls, oh god. But I was recording this for the non com channel, this took like uh, a few minutes, I guess. It's not that hard. It's not that bad. This bit is probably the worst bit because, you know, 
tight corners on ice <laughs> with touchscreen controls. It kind of gives me flashbacks to Rolling Gizmo Galaxy, although that didn't have any ice in it, but it still had these sorts of slightly traumatic moments. God damn it. You do need a bit of speed to get up that one hill, but then as soon as you're up, you want to slow the heck down because you'll take that momentum and it'll send you flying over the edge. So you want to go oh, just a nice little slow, little slow, slow ice adventure. Mm-hmm. Use the coins. Booyah. And what do we get? We get the better controller, the DualShock. <laughs> Those apes can't escape now. <laughs> Wow, you can literally see the dog noses that they use to make the controls. Jesus Christ, Tanner. <laughs> it's what it looks like! You're not wrong. Alright, gotta get a few more doohickeys here before we're done. I'm not super trying to go for 100% or oh, iconic. Hey, because there is the Ico cameo. Hey, hey! Uh huh, I believe that you get that one for all of the puzzle pieces in Memory Meadow. Basically, you'll get a trophy for all of the puzzle pieces in an area and um, all of the artifacts in an area. Um, so that's always a good indicator of um, how you've done. Bless. The VMU isn't as original as we thought because the pocket station was pretty much that. Um, the big thing that it was used for was uh, getting some items in Final Fantasy VIII. Um, they actually included, if you buy Final Fantasy VIII on the Steam version, you actually get a pocket station emulator to emulate it as you play. Oh wow. Wait for it. Oh. It's the sound of my childhood. Even as someone who didn't grow up with the PlayStation, hearing that sound meant you're in for a good time. So that, to me, hits me. Hits me right there. Right there. Let's see what's around these corners here. There's still a few little cameos. Bot Racer. I'm not really sure what that's meant to be. I think it's Ridge Racer. <laughs> There's every chance it's Ridge Racer. I mean, at this point, I just go, yeah, it's uh, it's that game. So I just tested to see if I could turn the TV off, but no, <laughs> Sony would not allow it. Oh, hey, it's those two cat mascots. Yeah, Toro and Kuro. They are uh, the basically the Japanese mascots for PlayStation, uh, especially looking at you know uh, PS1 to PS Vita era. They all had their own special little spin-offs. We started to get a bit of um, content with them in the PS4 era, and, and you know with some of the PS3 stuff. But for the most part, yeah, we didn't really we didn't have them. Beautiful, just beautiful, spectacular. And conquered worlds. I love how for this one exclusively, it turns the button prompts into the PS1 menus. Ah, well, you say that, but for the other consoles, it also does that. Oh, I didn't even notice that, probably because this one's the only one that's so glaringly 90s. <laughs> well, you'll see when we get to PS3, there's a very iconic font that they use. And here is the lab, or... Bizarrely, the Labo, as they call it here. I'm surprised they didn't run into actual copyright issues, though. Yeah, because I thought Nintendo just made up that word, uh, which I think they did, so they just put it in there for the heck of it. Sure. So, yeah, this is where we keep all the artifacts and whatnot, and by the by, we have the ability to dance with the T-pad. Oh my god, I never knew about this. I didn't even know about that either. Oh my god, that's amazing. Look <gasps> at Carlton! This is amazing. That would be my dad's, and of course the best one. <laughs> Game of the century. The references don't just stop at uh, the artifacts and whatnot, by the way. This is some sort of PlayStation multiplayer thing whose name I can't remember. I'm not sure, but yeah. That's the store. Yep, App Store, uh, PS Plus... Do you know what this one is, Tanner? Ah, uh, the... Oh! <gasps> Knack! It's Knack, baby! 
I I didn't know. I was I was looking the whole time for a knack reference, and I didn't even know that he'd be there. Yeah, baby. I didn't even notice that. And actually, on the walls you have the backs of consoles and whatnot. This one is PS4, I believe. This looks like PSP, I want to say. Yeah, that looks PSP-ish to me. That's Vita. Yeah, that looks like Vita. Alright, what else we got over here? I just want to look at everything. I want you guys to get why I like this game as much as I do. Oh god, something that I think you want to do is if you jump on the PlayStation 1, turn it on, or put, jump on the open button on the actual PS1. You want to use your lasers on the uh, open disc button. Oh, it did the intro sound. See you, suckers! Where did they go? I don't know, but still. Sending my mates into oblivion while the PlayStation jingle fades out is uh, <laughs> an experience, let me tell you. Oh, they're there. They're fine, everyone. No need to sue. I love that low-poly Astrobot. That's a, that's a good thing. I never had the, uh, the mouse. I did have a mouse for the Mega Drive, however. Uh, it came with a game where you could, like, paint and there was, like, a shooting minigame and so on. Oh, so not Mario Paint? <laughs> no, not Mario Paint. So yeah, basically, to get a number of trophies, you are going to A and Spyro! Bless. And I believe that is definitely Ridge Racer. For sure, Ridge Racer. Now little jigsaw pieces come together to make murals and whatnot. We're gonna go! very important part of the PS2 was DDR and the millions of uh, DDR clones that also came out with it. Oh, here's a very weird one. Do you know what this is, Richie? Uh, that is, I believe, Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, absolutely right. That was Aiden that did that, not me. <laughs> Alright, now a really cool thing. What have we been collecting coins for? Well, for Gacha, of course. Oh, my favourite genre! However, that said, this is not the cruelest Gacha, purely because there are a limited number of these things in here, so as long as you keep pulling, you will keep collecting. You don't get repeats, as far as I'm aware. Um, and eventually it will run out so you'll know when you've got everything. PS2 Network Adapter. Very important for if you want to play Resident Evil Outbreak, of course, as well as, you know, all the various MMOs. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be wondering, is there any feedback on the arm? There absolutely is. There's a nice ka feeling to it. And even when you crush the orb in your hands, you feel like the card crusher meme in real life. See? You even get uh, jigsaw pieces here, because there's not enough to fill a mural in the level, so you kind of have to uh, test your might here. These are all the beta designs for the PlayStation logo. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I love stuff like that. Oh yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, the only thing better than, uh, you know, the actual history is when they reference the unused history. That's always a really cool thing. Oh, little tiny dinosaur. Yep, that is the um, Demo T-Rex, who we've also seen out and about um, in on some of the screens as well. Neat. PlayStation trophies. This is one of those things where you need to feel it for yourself because it is so satisfying when you start crunching them yourself. Oh god, yes. And, oh, so cute! Oh, nice. Yeah! This is the one I was waiting for because not only is, hey, the PS1 the cuter way to, you know, play a PS1, uh, but because we have the PlayStation 1 uh, screen there, they actually combine! And you get to put them together! It's so cool! There you go, there you go. Right, so these go here, I assume. There we go. They kind of go everywhere because they're not just for the levels that we've done. You know, they're for all the levels, so 
It's not just for the levels, it's for the players, Tanner. Oh, that made a little bit of a sound. They all do. <laughs> you, you and me, bro, dance off. I have to say, the soundtrack for this game is really, really good. Um, it is actually done by uh, the same guy who did um, the previous um, Astrobot games. So, looking at, you know, uh, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Um, he also worked on the iToy. And he was also the composer for the original music in the Little Big Planet games, as well as Tearaway. So, uh, his name is Kenneth Young. And uh, honestly, I really, really love his music. <laughs> it's great. I love this soundtrack. So there we go. There are a lot of artifacts to get, but by golly, by gum, I'm going to try and get all of them, guys. Hey! The little amiibo trophies we got. They kind of add to the whole room here. Look, see, there's the trophies. Yep, I believe if you pick up one of the trophies... Hey! Ironic! Nice. Alright guys, that's uh, PS1 dimension done and dusted. Now it's time to go forward a generation to arguably Sony's peak as a console manufacturer. I'm talking of course of the PlayStation DOS. You know, I'm really getting tired of these monoliths coming popping up everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, really. You're just going about your day, bit, bop, boom. There's a tower for you. 